folks, Ariel over here at Find It. Today I want to discuss another one of my most frequently asked questions, and that is, how did I find a spot to park my tiny house? If you're new here, check out some of my other videos. I live in a tiny house on wheels. Everything about my setup is totally mobile and I don't own the ground where I'm parked. So I get asked all the time, how does that work? How did I find a place to put it? Lots of people either have tiny houses or want one, they'd like to buy one, they'd like to build one, but they don't know how to resolve this question of where can I put it. And that can certainly be something of a challenge because there are a lot of areas around the country where there aren't really any real rules that apply to tiny houses, and then there's a lot of different uh, you know, local and town and county jurisdictions that have different rules about what is and is not allowed as far as tiny houses. So that is going to be an ongoing challenge for probably quite a while. There are some people doing some great work on how to live tiny legally. Um, there's a documentary by that name. I encourage you to check that out if you're interested in the topic. That's got a lot of great info. But back to my personal situation, how did I find a spot to put my tiny house? Well, as you probably know, I used to be living in an apartment, like uh, probably a lot of 20-somethings, and I live in a, lived in a town that was very busy with tourists and just it's one of those markets, like a lot of areas around the country, where housing is crazy expensive. So I had a roommate at the time, we lived together in an apartment, and the house that we were in was sold. And so that left us looking for somewhere to go. And at that time, the, the rental market had just gone sky high and there was nothing available that wasn't like more than 100% of my income. And so I decided to have a tiny house built for me. Then I needed to figure out where to put it. Once I was pretty sure I wanted to go the tiny house route, that was the next big problem, like for most of you guys probably, if you're watching this. So, there are quite a few ideas out there on how to find spots now. I think it's getting a little easier as more people are aware of tiny houses in general, um, thanks to all the TV shows, even though some of them are a bit unrealistic, but it is certainly broadening the awareness of the whole tiny house concept. So now there's things like a tiny house hosting group on Facebook, which you can go to if you're looking for a place to put your tiny house, or if you've got land and you would like somebody to live on your land with a tiny house. There's, I think, over 10,000 members there. There might be several other groups. That's one I'm aware of. And there's just a lot more people doing this now. In my local area, I know several people living in tiny houses. They're all on various private properties, similar situations to mine. Some are paying rent for the, the monthly parking. Some are doing some kind of other work trade or barter system. But there's a lot of options. So for how I got mine, I decided I wanted to live in a tiny house. I was working on getting mine designed for me and then trying to figure out at the same time where I was going to put it. So I asked several people I knew in the area who have a little land if that would be a possibility. I had some ideas of who might have space and so on. And for one reason or another, all of those that I thought might work just didn't work out. Um, so I was getting a little discouraged, a little scared um, that I was about to not have anywhere to live. And then one day, just out of the blue, I had an acquaintance at the restaurant where I worked, and I was just describing to him where I, what I was trying to do. And um, he's a full-time caretaker for a fairly large branch. And he said, oh, my bosses would let you live here, I'm sure. Well, I mean, I have to ask them, but let me check. And so a day later, he came back and said, yeah, I told them what you're trying to do. And they said, great, yeah, Ariel can come over here. Um, so that was awesome. And they are fairly wealthy people. They have a lot of land. I do live on um, an 800-ish acre ranch. So there is a lot of space here. Their house is a pretty good long ways from my house, but it's worked out really well. And the amazing thing about that was it was something that I would have never even thought was possible. That wasn't the kind of people or situation, and this isn't the kind of property that I would have even thought was an option. So the first thing I'd encourage you to do if you're trying to find a spot to put a tiny house yourself is just ask, put it out there, let people know, um, because things might come up that you just 
you know, never even thought of, and it might be better than whatever you had dreamed about. And this situation has worked out really well for me. I live here, I don't pay any cash lot rent. I offered that, they said no. I do help with work around the property. As I said, there are other people that work here full time, but I do help with things, and those things are totally random, depends on the time of year and the weather and the season. So one time it'll be making hay, another time it'll be cutting firewood, it'll be clearing up down trees, it'll be taking care of a greenhouse or gardening or cooking a meal. It's just quite a variety of things. So they're all things I like and I like the variety. So it's working out really well for me. And for now they seem content to have me here. And I love getting to live in my little corner in the trees here, even though it's not really mine, and see all the wildlife that comes by. And it's just, it's worked out really well. So that's how I found my parking spot. Um, some other options I know of, I mentioned the Tiny House Hosting Group I know of on Facebook. There's also a organization called Worldwide Organic, Worldwide Orga Organization of Organic Farmers, I think. Anyway, the website is WWOOF, often referred to as Wolfing. Um, but it's a lot of organic farms around the world, not just in this country, and a a lot of times there can be a need on a farm or a ranch for there to be extra hands. So that's another good place I know of where some of my friends have found tiny house hosting spots by contacting farmers who needed somebody to work there anyway and they had a little extra edge of property where a house could be parked. And just again put it out there. Ask anyone you know. I don't mean just go like obnoxiously beg everyone but, but let people know what you're doing because somebody that you never dreamed of might say oh that would work out perfectly here or, hey i know somebody or you know just contacts that you don't have that that can work i know people who have made up cool little flyers about this is our tiny house this is how it works this is who we are me or me and my husband or us and our kids or whatever the situation is and they've just gone around their local area to whatever properties they think looks like something that'd be interested to them and, and knocked on doors and talked to people and some people I know have found amazing parking spots that way. There really just is a lot of different options but it's going to take some work and effort on your part because it's not quite the traditional thing that everyone is used to as far as a housing setup. But, like I said, a lot of people are getting more and more familiar with the whole tiny house concept, and I think that is making it easier. The other thing you're going to want to check is what the local zoning uh, rules are in your area, because I've also had friends who found a cool spot, and they were parked there for like a week, and they had a code officer come knocking on their door and saying that it was not legal to live in a tiny house. So do look into some of those things. As I mentioned, there's a documentary called Living Tiny Legally that has, it's available for free on YouTube. Um, it's got quite a bit of info on that topic. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not going to advise anybody on those aspects. But do be aware that that's another thing you do need to consider. And so that's my really simple story of how I happen to be on a really amazing little piece of dirt tucked in the woods living in a tiny house. I don't know how long I'll be here. I, you know, there's a little less stability when it's not my ground and it's up to somebody else. But I've been here for almost three years. I love it here and I hope I can stay for a while. And if not, that's not the end of the world. Like I said, everything is on wheels. I can fold up my solar panel frames. I can pack up my swing in my chairs. I can put everything in here and hitch up to a truck and head on down the road and find a new parking spot. So hopefully that's helpful with giving you guys some ideas. If you're watching this video, I assume it's probably because you have that question. How do you find a spot to put a tiny house? So check out Tiny House Hosting Group on Facebook. Check out www.oof.com for organic farms if that's the kind of thing that interests you. Put out flyers in your local neighborhood. You could put up a cool listing on Craigslist or if you've got like a local Facebook uh, resale or trade group in your area. Talk to people, let people know what you're doing. Be polite, be neat, be tidy, be friendly. Those things all for sure help with making someone interested in having you come live on their property because that does impact them as well. So good luck. Hopefully that's helpful and you guys have a great day. Thanks for watching folks. If you're interested in more info on my off-grid tiny house life, check out some of my other videos here. And if you like what you're seeing, Click the little picture of my house to subscribe and then hit the little bell so YouTube actually notifies you every time there's a new video available. See y'all next time.